All right, Shalom, Shalom. It's for the Atazah Dark Hero of Israel. I'd like to start off by giving honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Rukak Wadash. Double honors to the others and apostles, Great Mill Stone. Now, this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 25, right, going into the Hebrew. So, Lord willing, you're edified, giving honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahushai, Ba'ashim Rukak Wadash. Double honors to the others and apostles, Great Mill Stone. Right, so let's. Let's get right into it. It's Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 1. Right? Reads uh, Kaya, Yahaya, Raya, Bayan, Anashim. Meaning, because there be contention between uh, men. Right? Um, wa, um, Wanagashwa, Al. Hamashapat, right? Meaning, and they will draw near to the judge, right? And will judge them. Wa shapat, 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 um, shapat one, right? Which is really uh, uh the wa supplemental, so it's really wa shapat, shapat um, right? And judge them, right? Wa ha tazadai. Dayakwa, Atha Hataza Dayak, right? And he will justify uh, the uh, the righteous. Waha Rashaiwa, Atha Harashai, and he will condemn the uh, wicked, right? Like it says in Proverbs 16 and 15, right? Um, that was, which reads, uh, um, he who justified the wicked and condemned the just, right? And um, even he is an abomination to the Lord. How about you now, shy? Right? Verse 2 Wahaya, I'm Banhakwath, how Rashai, and if it be, it's like you. And it will come to pass if. Um, If uh um right um the the word bond means son right and will come to pass if it be uh the son of which he to he is to be smitten how hakwath uh the wicked how rashai right and he will fall waha. Payalwa uh, to the judge Hashapat, and he will smite him. Wahak, hak, wahak, slake, wahakwa, right? Um, before him, lapanayawa, lapanyawa, right? Uh, kadaya, kadi, kadaya, like. Sufficient, right? Daya means sufficient, right? Uh, Rashai Tawa unto uh, the wicked, Ka Masapar, meaning of number, right? Um, so verbatim it reads, and it will come to pass if it be the son of he that is to be smitten, the wicked, and he will fall uh, before the face of the judge, and he will smite him. Like that which is sufficient unto the wicked um, um, in number, right? Or in measure. Because that word masapar means of, of number. Ma meaning of, sapar meaning number. But here it's it's talking about in measure, right? And the measure is 40 stripes, right? Arabayim. Um... Yakanawa, right? 40, 40 times he will smite him, right? Uh, La'a Yasayap, and he will not, um, he will not add, right? Meaning 40 stripes, no more than 40. Pan Yasayap, lest he add to smite him, Lahak, Lakhak, Thawa, um, upon these. 
Al Alha. Meaning he's not to go beyond the 40 uh, stripes. Um, Maka. Aba. Right of smiting him uh, much. Wanakwal. Wanakwala. Akiaka. And he be uh, abhorred by his brethren before his eyes. Laayanyaka. Right? That word on the qual, the root is qualal, meaning to make light, right? As in, you know, um, you can use it in a non literal sense, in the sense of uh, to disdain something or abhor, right? Um, but it, the word qualal means light, as in, you know, the Israelites said that, uh, um, that they were tired of eating that light, the light bread, which was the manna. Right, that the Lord gave him in the wilderness, right? But you can use it in the sense of uh, in a w in a way which someone might esteem you or you know regard you as right, good in their eyes, or you know, um, uh, to lightly esteem, right? In this sense, is uh. He who is to receive forty stripes should not receive more, because then you would be uh, you would you would seem um, you would seem despised in the eyes of your brethren, right? So it says, uh, forty times he will smite him; he will not add unto it, uh, lest he add to smite him upon these, right above these salakia, uh, of smiting him smiting him much, right? And he be abhorred in the eyes of his brethren, right? La'a ta chasam shawar badayashwa, right? Meaning you will not muzzle the ox in his threshing, right? The word thresh is dayash or dawash, right? Um, chasam means to uh, muzzle, right? Let's uh, visit that word. Salakia. Yeah. Uh, thought I clicked on it. Um, not sure if that's it right there. Nope. So like yeah, so I'll just click on it. Uh the word for muzzle is hasam, right? Um to stop up to muzzle, right? To stop up to muzzle. Um so if you want to say like a uh uh, um, you know, you, you read a sign and it says you have to wear a mask, you would say, uh, um, Atha Labash, meaning you wear, uh, um, meaning, uh, ma meaning of, Hasam means to stop up or to muzzle. Right. Kaya Yashabwa Achiam Yahad Yahadwa because they dwell uh, brethren together, right? Wamath Achad Maham and dies one of them Waban Ayan Lawa and son there is not to him. La'a Thahaya um, There has not been, right? Meaning a son to him there has not been, meaning he hasn't had a, uh, he left no offspring, right? Ashath Hamath, the wife of the deceased, right? 
Um, Priscilla, uh, um, La'a Tahaya, meaning will not, will not, she will not be, right? Uh, the wife of the deceased, right? Ha, um, Hawataza, meaning, uh, um, to go out or outside, right? Or without, right? Meaning, uh, um, she will not go out, marry outside of, of, uh, um, that same patrimony, right? Uh, La Ayash Zar, to a man, an alien, meaning an outside party, right? Because before that is done, right, this law has to apply, right? And then she could be sent out, but, you know, because she'd be divorced, right? Uh, uh, Yabama, Yabaa, Alia, meaning uh, that word Yabama or Yabam, um, which is, let's get that word real quick. I believe it's Yabama. Yabam. Uh, to act as a liver, to marry the wife of this of the deceased. Right. That's um. Just means a uh, brother-in-law, right? Brother-in-law, husband's brother, right? Yabama, right? Husband's brother, brother-in-law, right? So it's Yabama, the root, right? Um, but here it's saying, right? Yabama, the ha at the end makes it feminine, meaning it's talking about the uh, deceased is brother, the deceased's brother right but really it's saying um 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 meaning um her brother-in-law right because if you just write brother-in-law it would be yabama but you would only write yabama the ha at the end is talk is uh signifying that it's talking about the deceased um, wife's wife's brother and her and his connection onto her right so this would be interpreted as uh, her brother-in-law right ya ba'a meaning he will go in unto her al ya right wa la ha and will take her unto him la wa to for a wife la asha Right? And, right, why Yabama, meaning and will be her brother in law, right? As in, you know, to perform the duty of, of a uh, brother in law, right? Which is called liver here, which is a fancy way, right, of saying the brother in law's duty, right? Wahaya, uh, Habakar, Ashar, Talad, no come to pass the firstborn, which which uh she will bring forth, right? Yaquam, Al Sham, Ahiawa, he will raise up upon um upon the name of his brother, meaning he will raise up a name unto his brother, right? Um, Hamath. The deceased, Wala'a, Yamacha, right? And will not he will not blot out his name, Shamwa, from Israel, Maya Sha'ala. Because that word, uh, uh, Macha, means to blot out, right? 
I'm not talking about yarmulkes. This is a uh, yarmulke. Yarmulke is not in the, in the scriptures. It's precepts of men, right? Um. So it reads, and it will come to pass the firstborn, which uh, which is brought forth, he will raise up upon. He will raise, and it um. He will raise up upon the name of his brother, meaning he's going to raise up a name unto his brother, right? And most of the time, you know, they they would just give him his his uh this the deceased it is his name, you know, in order to uh, continue his remembrance, right? So verbatim it says, and it, and it will come to pass the firstborn which is brought forth. Uh, he will raise up a name unto unto his brother. The deceased and will not be be blotted out his name from Israel, right? Wa'im la'a yachap yachapataza. Um, and if he does not uh, delight the man ha'ayash to take her, uh, right? To be her brother-in-law, right? Atha Yabamathwa. Right? And she will ascend up. Wa Ailatha. Ailatha. Um. Wa um Salaki. Yabamathwa. So you know, uh, this is a, this is just saying that if the man doesn't delight to take her, right, to perform the duty of a brother-in-law, sh she's gonna ascend up and appear before the elders, right? Her and her brother-in-law, which is why it says Yabamathwa, right? Uh, which is the brother of the deceased, right? To the gate, right? Ha Shayara. Of the elders, Al Hazakwanyam, and she will say, Wa Amara Ma'an Yabamya, or Salakia Ma'an Yabamaya, right? And she will say, He, he, um, he will not be, uh, performed. He will not be my brother-in-law. I'm just reading it verbatim, right? Uh, la, la ha kwayan, uh, to raise up to his brother Akiawa, la Akiawa, uh, a name, Shum, ba Yasha'ala in Israel. La a ba, yabamaya, right? And is not, and he was not willing, uh, to. Uh, to be my brother-in-law, as in to perform the duty of the levir, which, you know, it's mainly, it's basically the duty of the brother-in-law, or the brother of the deceased, right? So verbatim it reads, and if he has no delight, the man in her to take her, right, uh, to perform the duty of the brother-in-law, and she will ascend up, and her brother-in-law to the gates of the elders, and she will say, um, he has refused, right, uh, uh, to be my brother-in-law, to raise up unto his brother, a name in Israel, right, he is not willing, right, to perform the duty of, of the uh, deceased, right, but really it says, he is not willing to be my brother-in-law, right, because that's what, that's what it really means. Yapama literally means brother-in-law, right? But simplified, it would just say, and if he does not delight the man to take her, right, um, to perform the duty of the deceased, and she will send up, and the, 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 um, and the brother of the deceased to the gates, to the elders, and she will say, right, he is not, he refu he is refusing uh, to perform the duty of the deceased, 
to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He is now willing to perform uh, the duty of the deceased, right? Just to make it, you know, make sense, right? Which is uh, what you read right here, Zalakia. Actually, I already clicked on that. And that word, Halataza. Um, it just means to delight or to be attentive, right? Meaning he didn't give her the time, right? He didn't, right? Halataza, meaning to draw off, withdraw. Aramaic, halataza, uh, to spoil. Um, Arabic says halataza, to withdraw, to retire. Right? Um, halataza, to equip for war. Right? Which that word means to draw out as well, right? To draw out, right? To delight, to be attentive unto a matter. Um, Halataza, to draw out, to loose, to pull off, right? Um, To withdraw, right? So Salakia, that's what it says, right? If he withdraws himself, the man, right? Right? But here, it's in a sense of, so you know... The sense of he does not delight to take her, meaning, right? Um, let's get some precepts, right? Let's see, uh, so like it. crazy, crazy ass music. Um, let's see, to be armed. Armed, nope, it's not what that means. Let's see, armed, armed, delivered, delivered. It doesn't mean deliver either, it just means to draw out, right? For example, uh, let's see, let's just get a preset, um, yeah, let's do this one. Numbers 31 and 3. By the bar Masha al Ha'aim, and he spoke Moses to the people, La Amar, to say, Draw, draw yourselves out. Right? Ha Halatazawa, Ma Athakam, you. Right? Amen Anashium to the host, La Tazaba, Wahayawa, and it will come to pass. Right? Or Salakia, and they will be upon the Midianites, Al Madayan, right? Lathath, uh, to place vengeance, Nakwamath, the vengeance of the Lord, Yahweh, upon Midian, Ba Madayan, right? So it's in a sense when uh, one draws themselves out to war, or they draw themselves 
right? Uh, in this sense, right, it says, I'm la'a yachapataza ha'ayash, right? And if, right, he is, he does not draw himself out the man to take her, meaning he doesn't participate, right? To uh, raise a seed unto his brethren, right? So it says, why or Salak you ever And if he does not uh, participate the man to take right um to take her right to uh to perform the duty of the deceased, right, and she will ascend up and the brother of the deceased to the gates to the elders, and she will say, right, uh he has refused the duty of the of the deceased to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel, right? He is not willing to perform the duty of the deceased, right? Wakwaraawa Lawa Zakwanya Ayarwa and they will call call them call to them the elders of the city. Salakia so what the Barwa Al Yawa and will say unto him, right? Wa Aimad, Wa Amar, and will stand and will say, right? Meaning the elders of the city, they're going to call out that man in particular, right? To present himself, to speak unto him, right? And they have to hear him say, right? So he's going to stand there and he will say, La'a Hapataza. Right, I will not uh, draw myself out, meaning I will not participate to take her. Right, so Rabbi me would say, Right, and they will call him the elders of the city, right, and he will and will speak unto him, right, and he will stand and say. I will not participate unto taking her unto me, right? Wanagash, Wanagash, ha. Um, Yabamathwa, Al Yawa, and she will draw near, right? Um, her, um, she will draw near. Unto the brother of the deceased, Yabamathwa, right? Unto him, Al Yawa, before the eyes of the elders, La Ayanya Hazakwanyam, right? Wachalataza, and will draw out um, his shoe, Nayalwa, from, his, from upon his feet, Ma'al Ragalwa. Um, and will spit, and she will spit in his face. Waya Rakwa Bapaniawa. Right? Wa Ainath, Ainatha, and she will answer. Wa Amara, and will say, Kaka, like thus. Uh, ya Aisha, they will do. La Ayash to, to the man, Ashar La A Yabana, which he will not build to the house of his brother, Atha Bayath Akiawa. Right? So Rabbeidim reads, and she will draw near, right, to the brother of the deceased before the eyes of the elder, and will loose off his shoe from upon his feet, and will spit upon his face, and will answer and say, Thus shall it be done to the man which he has. Ref refused to build a house unto his brother. That's kind of funny, but that's the law, right? Um, so like, yeah, let's see. Yo, right? Right? 
your rock, uh, primitive root to spit, um, your rock to spit, um, let's see, the Arabic says Yaraquan, it says Robigo, I don't know what the hell that is, um, well, sometimes when you read uh, certain of these Arabic words, they place a Latin. Uh, here, I'm going to show you. Robigo might be uh, Latin, so like, yeah. Robigo Latin. Robigo meaning uh, mildew, honeydew, calamitas, katamitas, right, so it's some form of Latin. Right, blight, right. A foul uh, deposit of the mouth in the mouth. I guess that's another word for spit, right? Um, so verbatim it says, <clears throat> Salakia. Well, I actually already read it, but yeah, right? That's what that means. Your rock, right? Deuteronomy 25 and 10, Shamwa, Bayasha'ala, and they will call his name in Israel, Bayath, Halataza, Hanael, 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 meaning, and they will call his name in Israel, the house of uh, him with the uh, uh, loosed shoe. So, you know, he's going to be known as that person, right? The man of the house of the loosed shoe, right? Kaya Yanatazawa Anashium Yachadwa, meaning because they go out, men together. Because that word Yanataza. It, it, it's supposed to mean contention, but that's not what that means, right? It's just a shorter version of saying Ya na taza wa awa, you, you know, as in taza a, as in to go out, right? Because the blue letter might tell you something different, but that's not, it's not used widely enough in in the Torah for it to be considered something different. Because it has a, the same connotations. Right? Uh, Ayash wa Akiawa wa Koraba. Right? A man and his brother. And she comes near. Right? The wife, Ashath, of the one, ha Ahad. Right? La Ha Tazayal, to withdraw. Um. To her husband, Atha Ayasha, uh, from the hand of him that is smiting him, Mayad Mak Maka Makawa, um, Washalach Washalacha, and sends out her hand, Yada Waha Chazayaka, and she takes hold, right, as in a firm grip. Upon his genitals, Ba Mabash Yawa Salakia Ba Mabashia Mabashia Wa, right? And that word for genitals, right? The root is uh, Bawash, meaning shame, right? As in, it's talking about the man's privy parts, right? Salakia, let's see. Um, here it is. 
Amabashium, plural the male pudenta secrets. Um, preview parts, you know, that's just what it says. Preview parts of the male. But let's look at the uh, the root. Um, bawash. The root word is um. To make, bring to, cause, put to shame, right? That's what the word means, Sh denotes uh, shamefulness, right? Um, uh, that's really nothing for that. Um, a wash. To be ashamed, it answers to the Syriac. Um, Bahath, also Arabic, Bahath, because that's the Ba, those little, looks like a ribbon, that's Ha, and that's Tha. To be astonished, confounded, right? That's not what that means. Um, put to silence. To fail in hope and expectation, nope. Um, right, because it says, uh, right, ashamed, delayed, but really that's ashamed. It should be ashamed there, ashamed, right. So it's denoting uh, shamefulness or embarrassment, right? Ashamed, ashamed, confounded, which is, that's not what that means, right? Right? So that word is mabash, right? Ma meaning of. Abash uh, means shamefulness, right? But that's not the actual word for genitals, right? Just like uh, uh, shapak, right? Shapak is known as the uh, male organ. But that's because it's in the sense of pours. That's shapak literally means pour out, right? Which is what the male organ does, pours out. Um, um, urine, right? So, Rabatima says, because they go out men together, right, and as in contention, right, um, Ayash, or Salakia, uh, a man and his brother, and she comes near the man of the one to withdraw uh, to her husband from the hand of him that is smiting him, and Salakia, <clears throat> and she sends out her hand. And takes firm hold upon his privy parts, right? Wa kwatazath, kwatazatha, right? Kwataza means to cut off, right? And they will cut off, right? To her uh, hands. Atha kapa. The word kap literally means palm, right? As in, they're gonna sever the, the uh, palm from the arm. La'a tachas ayanka. You will not pity uh, your eyes, right? So it says, and you will cut up to her hands, to her hand. You will not pity your eye. La'a yahaya laka bakayaska. There will not be right unto thee in your pouch aban wa aban a stone and a stone gadala wa kwatana right gadal means great or or um um kwatan or meaning least right um so basically so basically it's saying there will not be in thee, in your pouch, stone, 
and a stone are great and small. The reason because of that is because ancient measures were used by using stones, right? Or the product itself and to weigh it against the, uh, the money of purchase, right? Or, right, let's just take a look at, let's just look it up. Um, how ancient scales worked. How ancient scales worked. Um, right. Right, so if you were exchanging uh, silver or gold, right, you would exchange it according to its weight. Or if you were to buy a product, you would put the product on one side. If you were doing it according to weight, uh, you would have one one stone. And actually, you would actually carry a stone with you, right, because you would take it out of your bag, out of your pouch, and put it on there and weigh it against whatever your... your um, what that which is being weighed right and used in many ways right see you have uh what you see in the pictures there right but basically it's just telling you that you're gonna have equal weights and measures right because uh um and that word kayas is the root is kawas or kayas which literally actually means cup, but here it's denoting a pouch, right? Um, for example, the cup, you could even say kawas for uh, the eye, the eye, uh, what do you call it? Um, the eyeball and the eyelid, right? Because in the sense of, right, here's a ka which is the palm, right? This is the eye ball, right? The wa means um, tent peg or nail, right? Which is the membrane of the eye, right? Which is what holds it in place. And sa, which is in the Paleo Hebrew, this is the sa, which means bush or thorn right that is denoting the eye right kawas right cup right because the cup has what the palm which holds liquid right and secures it wa and the sa right which is a bush you know let's say you have some tea you put in the tea and the cup that holds the water in place and right that's the uh um that is the understanding behind that word right so it says there will not be in thee unto thee in your pouch a stone and a stoat stone great and small right meaning you're gonna have equal weights and measures not just in measuring right for example, you know, you're selling some barley, then you got some corn, right? That reason for that scale was that you would measure it equally, right? And sometimes stones were actually placed on scales or actually the shekel itself to measure out what the payment of that product would be, right? Because you would have a, you know, a, um, a weight which would go on one side right which is a uh, how you would figure out for example someone is paying you 10 shekels right you have uh, um and this is in the law you have these these beans that I believe they were called gurs 
right? Little black beans you would put on a scale, right? So 10 of those on one side would be how you would measure, for example, maybe two shekels, depending on the the, uh, the standard of, of weight for that coin in that province or whatever the case may be, right? But it will be measured by those uh, gars. Let's see if I can get that. Um, Gara and Bible. Right? A Gara is an ancient Hebrew unit of weight and currency, right? Was equivalent to one one twentieth of a standard sacred shekel, right? What is a gera in the Bible? And how was it weighed? Let's see if we can get something for that. Alright, here's some examples. Um, let's see. A gara, which is a small bean. Uh, would be one twentieth of a shekel, um, right? So you would place the the the, the um, standard of weight, right? You have a little, you have a stone, right? Which would measure the standard of weight and the 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 money itself, right? In order to know that they're actually giving you the proper amount, and that it weighs the proper amount, right? So not only will you examine if it's real gold or silver, or whatever the case may be, you would be able to tell by the weight of it by comparing it to the uh, standard of weight, which you would place, right? One stone, or Salakia, not one stone, but you know, one standard of weight in order to measure a certain weight, right? So 10 Geras, would equal a, a becca and two beccas would equal a shekel right let's see so here you have a becca which is 5.7 grams a payam, 7.6 grams, right? Nazef, 9.12 grams. A shekel, 11.4 grams. Eight shekels would be 91.2 grams, right? That's the stone that, you know, you're supposed to have equal, meaning you're going to have a balanced uh, measuring stone, right? These are actually measuring stones, right? It wasn't money, it wasn't, this wasn't, this isn't money. This is what you would use to measure money, right? So you were not going to have, you're not going to have one of these, but you have one in your bag that is di different sizes. No, it has to be under, according to one standard, right? So if I make a measurement, if, I, if I'm making a transaction with another person in the ancient date, in the, in the ancient world, we would both have one of these stones. It looks like it's like clay. It looks like it's made of clay. And we would both put our right, um, our stone on the weight, and we would see. Okay, they made they weigh the same much. They they weigh the same, right? So now we're gonna weigh the the money and the stone next to it, right? So. <laughs> Right, this would be on one side of the scale, 
right? And then you would put your, your coins on this side. Let's say it's like two or three. And it's still, you know, this is still weighing down. Or Salakia, this is weighing down. Well, let's just say this is weighing down. It means you have not put what the weight requires for this. Right? Which measures another person's currency. Right? So that means you, you, you put more and then it's going to balance itself out. Right? And then you would say, okay, uh, that's correct uh, measurement for this transaction. Okay, then you know you go through with the transaction, or you would have, for example, right, um, basically, yeah, you, you get the point, you know, just what that says, right? There were stones for, to weigh, right. Salakia. Um, verse 14, La'a Yahayu, La'ka, Baba Yathka, that will not be unto thee in your house a measure, Ayapa, which is an Ephaph, and a measure, right? A measure and a measure, great and small, right? This is the Ephaph. Right, but this law is just going into having equal weights and measures, right? Epaph in the Bible. No, not E5. Epaph. Slakia. Epaph measured in the Bible. All right. Which would be, um, here it is. It's a liquid measure. Right, let's see if we can find something better. Right, so you would have a way to weigh money, and you had a, a way to me, to weigh, to measure, it's like you, uh, to weigh liquid, right? This is an, an EPAF, it's like you, where is it? To weigh dry measures and liquid measures, right? The EPAF is a dry measure, which is this right here. Right, so in your house, you're supposed to have one type of measure, EPAF, and a standard, right? For example, you sell an EPAF of grain, it has to be this size. You can't have an EPAF that is slightly bigger or slightly smaller, right? Or, for example, right? You get the point, actually. You know, I don't want to spend too much time on it. You can look it up on your own. Right, so you're not supposed to have the e an e path greater or smaller, right? But a lot of times that just means a measure. You can just say measure. Aban shalama watazadak, a stone whole and just, will be unto thee yahaya laka, ayapa, a measure, all uh, complete. Shalama watazadak and just right will be unto thee Yahaya Laka Lamayan Ya Arayakawa so that um, he may lengthen your days Yam Yamyaka upon the earth Al Ha Adama Ashar 
Yahweh Lahayaka Nathan Laka, which Lord your power is given unto thee. Right? Um Kaya the Ibath Yahweh Lahayaka, because it is an abomination to Lord your power. Call Aisha Alha all that do these call it Aisha I wall right all that do unrighteousness because I wall means unrighteousness right I want means iniquity I wall is the opposite of, of Tazadak which means just or justice right um, Zakar Atha Ashar Aisha Remember to that which did unto thee, Laka, Amalek, I'm Lak. Right? It's not I'm a Lak, because it's that's not what it's talking about. I mean that's not how you say it. <laughs> um I'm Laka, right? Where's the lack? Yeah, I'm Lak, right? That's how you actually say it. Um, and really, the word, the name behind the word behind Amalek, it means um, Imal means uh, to toil, um, and Imak means um, a dweller in the valley, right? Because that's where they're from. They they come from uh, low hanging valleys, which is called a mak, which is called a steep place. That's the word for Imak. It literally means a steep place or a uh, right a low valley, which is for another uh, lesson. But actually, we can get that. Let's see. Um, Salakia blue letter. So they were called Amalek because that's where they dwelt and they. Uh, you know they did there they lived um valley i mock which means a steep place and i'll show you in a second what that a valley a low tract of land of wide extent All right here's an example Steep place valley um let's see what we get slacky and not maps shit I wasn't trying to do that let me just exit out damn all right this is what an Imak is, right? It's a valley, but it's kind of, you know, it's a mountainous kind of, a, you can't really walk down it, right? Which is a steep place, right? A, right? a steep valley, right? In the sense of a narrow, narrow valley, right? So it's a combination of Imal and Imak, right? Um, meaning um, Imal means the work or uh, toil and Imak means um, narrow valley or steep place, steep valley. Right, so it says, remember to that which did unto the Amalek in the way by the rock upon your going out. From Egypt, Ba Tazaathakam, Ma Matazarium, Ashar Quarka, Ba Darak, which he met thee in the way, right? Because that Quar Quar or Quara or Quara is the same. It means to meet, to call out, to cry out against someone, right? Um. Um right that's all that it means right 
to meet someone in battle, right? So Amalek, which met thee in the way, right? Wayazanab, right? Uh, Zanab means tail, but it this is talking about uh, the hindermost, as in the 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 um, backside of a uh, of an army, right? And um, so Wayaz um, Zanab Baka. And they're hindermost upon thee, right? Uh, call Ha Shalyam, right? All which were, um, um, which is, uh, were weakened, right? Let's get that real quick, actually. First, let's get Zanab. Literally means literally it means tail, but it's talking about right. Um, the hindermost of a uh, encampment. Zanab meaning to wag, to curtail, smite the hindermost, which it really just means tail. You know, for example, um, so the scripture is actually saying Amalek met the children of Israel by tailing them you know you read about that you know oh like you see that in the movies tail that person as in uh follow them right but it actually means tail right but you know tail of animals to follow after right so like yeah click that of it right and that's what that means so it literally means tail but it also means it's another word to say follow after right um, let's see. So the Arabic says anap, which is that's supposed to mean nose, right? Which in the Hebrew it's up. Um, wa uh, da'anab which is how they say tail which is really zanab to tail right hindermost um right so it says which met thee in the way right and they uh right and they uh, um, pursued upon thee, right? But it's actually Zanab, meaning they, you know, they, they followed after thee, upon thee, right? Um, all which were uh, weakened. Now let's look at that. Let's look that up real quick. Is it Kashal? I think so. Kashal. Um... To shatter, no, that's not what it's talking about. Just means, um, let's see, weaken. Right, so you see, it just means to weaken, which is, uh, from Kalash. Which is the word is just the wording is just uh, uh, switched around. The letters are just switched around, right? And you're gonna encounter diff several words that are like that, right? Halash, right? Which just means to weaken, right? Weaken, right? Um. The Arabic is ma mahalas, which means poor. Um, the Syriac says halasha, means 
means weak, right? So that's what it means, uh, to weaken, right? So you might say halash or might say hashal, right? The sha and the la is just uh, interchanged, right? All that were weakened, right? Behind the acharyaka, acharyaka, wa'atha, and to those um, that were weary, ayap, the word ayap means weary. So like, yeah, um, ayap, which is, um, ayap, languish, no, that's not what it's talking about. Weary, faint, but it just means, uh, uh, weary, right? Why you guy, right? And um, that word you guy is uh, let's get that real quick. So lock it. I don't think I got that. Oh, here it is. Your guy, one who is exhausted, weary, wearisome. Um, let's see what else we can get. Yagai, um, <clears throat> which uh, that word Yagai denotes wearisome toil, right? Which would be uh, Ayap Wa Yagai, um, those that were uh, uh, faint and weary, right? Wala'a, Yara'a, Alahayim, and they did not fear uh, the powers, right? Meaning they did not fear God, right? Uh, so verbatim it says, which met thee in the way, right? Um, um, pursuing after thee, right? Or pursuing behind thee, uh, all that were weakened behind thee, right? And uh, and to you, which were um, which were uh, faint and wearied, and they didn't, they did not fear God, right? Wahaya ba Hanayach Yahweh and the, and it will come to pass upon giving you giving rest, right, the Lord of your power, the word Nayach or Nawach means rest, which is where you get the name Noah from, it just means rest. Um, Laka, Makal, Ayabiaka, unto thee from all of your enemies, round about, Masabiab, Barataza, Ashar, Yahweh, Alahayaka, in the land which the Lord your power has given unto thee, to inherit, Nachala, to possess, La Rashata, you will blot out Tha Macha to the remembrance of Tha Zakar of Amalek, I'm I'm Lak, uh, Mathachath from under the heavens, Hashemayim, uh, you will not forget La'a Tha Shakach, right? Um, which is not really going to come under our hands, it's really going to be. In the sense that the Lord is going to destroy the house of Esau, right? When, uh, you know, you, you first you got to have Revelation 13 16, you got to have a third woe, which is World War Three, right? You got to have all hell breaking loose, right? And but the main prophecy is, right, the Karagma, right, which is the M to the O to the T to the B, the, um, the um the mark right of a uh, hashatan right but that's what it's talking about right uh so verbatim it says and it will come to pass when the lord gives thee rest from all your enemies round about the land which the lord your power has given unto thee to inherit to possess you will blot out to the remembrance of amalek from under the heavens you will not forget 
Okay. So there you there you go. That's this Deuteronomy chapter twenty five, right? Going into the Hebrew. Lord willing, ratified, giving all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Habakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, a great millstone. Kwam Yasha Allah, a Bible ball, and Shalom.